Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Recently, we've seen a couple of various different attachment updates within Warzone to adjust how certain ones behave and perform. Some of them being some of the main meta attachments that you'll use across the board on a large variety of weapons. And so today, I wanted to go through some of the more universal attachment categories and talk about your main choices and if certain adjustments have, uh, you know, made more of an impact or less of an impact than it may seem initially. So as we go through everything, if you enjoy the video or if you find it helpful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. It's always really appreciated. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to guarantee you are always up to date with all things going on in the world of COD. So we're we're just on a basic SVA for the time being. We're going to go through a handful of these attachment categories. We'll talk about a few different weapons and, uh, you know, categories here as the video goes on. But really, what I want to focus on is a lot of these main universal uh, attachment categories. So things like muzzles, underbarrels, a lot of the rear grips, some of the stocks, optics, things like that. Uh, initially with the muzzle category, obviously a couple of the main changes that we've seen over time are uh, nerfs to the Jack BFB and then also the Spirit Fire Suppressor more recently. And initially with the Jack BFB, this was nerfed several updates back and I still see a lot of questions about this one in general. Should I be using this? You know, it still offers insane control benefits, but the deal here is that its cons now are pretty extreme. While it is giving you really solid control, the velocity penalty is huge because a lot of people were using this on mid to long range guns and that's just not good whatsoever but also killing your strafe speed your ads speed your sprint to fire also means that it's not going to be great for close range options either because those are wildly important stats too so for the most part the jack bfb is an attachment that is not really all that viable anymore in very maybe situational niche one-off instances it could be useful but for the most part this is one you'd want to replace with an alternative like for instance the two most popular compensators now the casus break and the zem 35 compensator the casus break is so important because horizontal recoil is much more difficult to predict than vertical and this directly attacks horizontal recoil it also though helps out with firing aim stability which makes your gun a lot easier to shoot just because it's going to be more accurate over time there with less rng factored in the zem 35 compensator is great for close to mid-range based options here just because it's giving you some decent control benefits 15% vertical and 5% horizontal with minimal cons only uh 5% to your ADS speed which is very minimal you can often get that back with other attachments on close range options and then velocity decrease again only 5% for close to mid-range not going to be a huge deal so those are going to be the main two here I do see a lot of questions about other certain compensators particularly some MW2 ones that have been popular over the course of time but something you're going to notice with a lot of these is that they are hurting aiming idle sway which is not something you want to do really whenever an attachment is actually uh you know decreasing your aiming idle sway or your firing aim stability you're essentially adding rng to your recoil pattern for no real reason that's just something that i don't really ever envision being worth a trade-off and you'll see that a lot of different compensators end up hurting the aiming idle sway here so while there are some good pros to these like komodo heavy does a lot for your control it's actually going to end up hurting it some too at the same time time so that is something you definitely want to take note of in the compensator and muzzle category in specific obviously with suppressors uh the spirit fire is still going to be one of the main ones here while it was nerfed to be a tad bit slower still getting this three and one of range velocity and control is incredibly important and without taking away one of those pros i still think this is going to be the default for the vast majority of players now the barrel category is going to be one that's largely weapon specific so we don't really have to spend a ton of time on this it's just about the type of weapon you're using if you're using a mid to long range gun obviously you want to use a barrel that excels uh in the mid to long range and increases the efficiency there so something that's going to extend the range and or the velocity and or the control there if you're using a close range based weapon you probably want something that's going to increase your general movement speed or your ads or your sprint to fire or your strafe and you just build that to enhance its play style a little bit more so that one's a bit more straightforward laser sights also pretty straightforward if you're looking for a gun with a fast ads and sprint to fire the kimura the razor hawk things like that are going to be ideal if you want to tax stance one you just look through and see whichever is going to have the best tax stance spread stats and select that one once more very straightforward now we are consistently seeing a lot of updates to the optic category particularly with like aftermarket parts and whatnot and so through that we've actually seen a lot of new uh, options enter the mix here for mid to long range my go-to is always going to be the 2.5 times eagle eye and you guys see me spam this on so many different builds but the close range and even the mid range has a lot of versatility uh, in terms of just what you want out of an optic if you want a blue dot looking optic the glassless works great this is also going to be one that adds in some firing aim stability
stability, which other optics won't do. That's a huge benefit that this has. If you still want to stick on that blue dot sort of theme there, you can also go for something like the MK3 reflector. So that's really good too. The NIDAR 2023 is a very clean, just yellow dot option, obviously. The slight reflector, which we passed a little bit ago, is pretty good as well. Slimline would be an option, SZ Mini would be an option, and then of course, the basic slate too. But really, while there are, I think, a few standouts here, these ones that I just mentioned, when it comes to optics, it's all about what you are comfortable with. So say, for instance, I'm just going to scroll to a random one here for the sake of the example. You love the Holocraft optic for whatever reason. You find yourself to be super accurate with this. Use this. If you think you're better off using this than you would a slate or an MK3, always use the one you are the most comfortable with. That's the default answer for any question about, hey, which optic is the best? There's really no true best. It's just comfortability. Stocks, again, are going to be more of a weapon specific category here. If you want better control, focus on the control based ones. If you want better movement, focus on the movement based ones. Be careful, though, because a lot of these attachments, again, are going to hurt aiming idle sway, whether it's an MW2 stock or an MW3 stock. So just be mindful of that. Now, rear grips, I find to be a very important one because I get asked about this a lot. Why would you not use a rear grip for control? Why are you not using these on this build to make it better? The simple answer is that really across the board, right now for attachments whether you're looking at an mw2 gun or an mw3 gun is that the rear grips that end up helping out with control tend to usually hurt your aiming idle sway or your firing aim stability the 650 is a strange one here because it actually helps firing aim stability but hurts idle sway but it's still not something i'd use just because that con will be noticeable over time and this is applied to several different uh rear grips now there are some that'll just be based around aiming idle sway exclusively and that's nice but i still feel like there's more valuable attachments out there really the only time i'd be using a rear grip is if i was using an smg so for instance on the ram 9 for example here if i wanted to increase my mobility here i'd probably be going for something like the xv grip tape because it's going to help out with my sprint to fire the tack stand spread the strafe speed something like that other uh rear grips will just focus on ads and sprint to fire some focus solely on strafe speed again that's a bit more of a weapon specific thing are you looking for a certain pro there or are you just trying to generally increase the mobility really the only real use for rear grips at this point uh, in the game is I think for mobility benefits just because as mentioned those control based ones end up hurting uh, important stats a little bit too much. Hey everyone, wanted to take a quick second and chat about my friends over at G Fuel. If you're looking to stay focused, energized, or just hydrated, they've got you covered all around with their normal tubs, their hydration tubs, and their cans. A couple of my personal favorites at the moment gotta be Sage Mode Hydration, Watermelon Mint, and also Starfruit. Now, if you're looking to try G Fuel for the first time, they got sample packs. Those are perfect for just finding out which flavors you prefer. And then once you're set there, grab a full on tub and restock on your favorite. And whatever you're looking to pick up, if you throw in code IMMORTAL at checkout, you'll get yourself a nice little discount. The link for that will be down in the description below if you're interested. Magazine, obviously very straightforward. You're just going for the extended mag at all times. You want to have enough ammo to fight one on two, two on three, three on four, four on four. You can never have enough ammo. Ammunition is going to be another one of these that's very case by case. Sometimes you want to go all in on velocity and you'll need that. So you want to bump up with high velocity. Snipers can benefit a lot from this. Sometimes you want to extend your damage range to have a quick T tk out to a further distance that's when something like high grain or other ammo types uh would come in handy there it's just going to be a matter of what are you trying to increase on your gun there's no universal right answer here and then lastly under barrels another wildly important category that we have seen some changes to recently for instance the bruin heavy support was nerfed a few updates back and with this i've seen a lot of questions zach is it still worth it to use this and if you've been paying attention to some of my meta videos you'll still see bruin heavy support is on here a lot it's on a lot of my mid to long range guns sometimes even my close range if i really need control why is that? Because while this is still doing some to horizontal control, not as much as it was before, it's still helping out with horizontal control, which as we talked about before is a huge deal. Also ends up helping with the gun kick. Plus what's not shown in the advanced stats is the benefits to firing aim stability and aiming idle sway. Getting both of those in one attachment is so clutch, especially for the mid to long range, that this is still a super, super valuable attachment. But it's also not the only option for some good control. If you've got more of a mid range base gun that you want some horizontal benefits on the choke angle is really good for that it does a little bit of horizontal but this is also going to make your weapon more aggressive it speeds up the mobility some as well with your strafe speed and your general movement speed so for more sniper support style builds or even some smgs that could be a really good choice there the ftac angle is probably one of the closest uh you know replacements for the bruin heavy support this is also going to attack horizontal control you'll just see that it doesn't have the cons of the bruin heavy your ads is not being slowed down here 
it's uh, a minor increase to vertical control and it's still helping out with aiming idle sway so this is a huge benefit as well just sort of like a hidden bonus there that you won't always see here on the advanced stats but that's a great replacement if you're okay with having a little bit uh you know more horizontal but less for like your gun kick and less for firing aim stability uh but also less cons as well so it's not hurting your gun as much that's a great alternative i do see a lot of questions about certain mw2 under barrels you know ripper 56 that's been one that we've used a lot in the past you know dating back to mw2 and warzone 2 really again with mw2 attachments as i talked about earlier their cons are just so harsh still that when you're using these you're oftentimes hurting the gun more than you're going to be helping so i just typically tend to avoid these and then on the close range side of things for under barrels i think you got a couple of pretty obvious choices and it's just going to be what you favor the most in terms of mobility dr6 hand stop is usually my go-to just because the pros are so obvious getting better strafe and better movements and better ads and sprint to fire is so clutch on any weapon that's based around the close to mid range and so that one usually is my go-to but things like the ms p98 are decent for getting a little bit of strafe speed a little bit of general movement but also a tad bit of control if you're really needing that edge bw4 again really good with some movement benefits across the board if you're going for more of a tack stance or hip fire build bruin bastion goes absolutely nuts for that as well but uh really if you're going more so based around movement i think the clear and obvious answer the vast majority of the time is going to be dr6 so that's the general universal attachment breakdown there which you really want to look out for category to category another thing that i do want to point out here because we are on the subject of attachments obviously is that mw2 weapons we've seen a rise in several of these over the past couple of updates a really key thing to take note of with mw2 attachments is just how harmful a lot of the base mw2 attachments are going to be just like in the universal categories muzzles under barrels so on and so forth how a lot of the mw2 attachments have severe cons for instance on the wrap typically on a mid to long range gun we'd be running a barrel uh you know a rear grip a stock to help things out but look at how much things are being attacked here worse aiming idle sway worse control so that'd be obsolete for mid to long range worse control and worse aiming idle sway and worse range uh worse aiming idle sway worse range and velocity so that's obviously sort of a no-go the stocks here kill idle sway kill idle sway kill idle sway the rear grips here hurting idle sway uh the second one hurting control so this is the case with a lot of mw2 weapons where really if you're trying to build one out to be competitive the answer is going to be okay i have an mw2 gun here how many mw3 attachments can i use i can use an mw3 muzzle i can use an mw3 under barrel i can use maybe an extended mag an mw3 optic and then you're kind of just left to okay how can i not negatively impact my guns so that's still a huge drawback of using a lot of different mw2 guns at the moment so just a little psa there but yeah all that being said that's effectively what you want to look out for now when you're building out your setups and of course i'll have my top tens my top fives my various different meta niche breakdowns on the channel very consistently so if you guys are really ever questioning a certain weapon setup or a certain set of attachments this is the place to be to stay up to date with all the latest metas alongside news updates patch notes everything else going on in cod don't feel free to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date and if you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful do me a favor and drop a like on your way out but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out